utility has it, it doesn't really uh, get reproduced throughout the map. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely could. So now coming into this one, of course, as well, uh, this is BT starting on the attacking side. Like we said, they picked into the map, so they're not getting the preference. And it's about what kind of ideas they can create for us immediately here. That is also why I like this double duelist setup coming out from them, because it means that you can channel a lot more of that aggression early doors. How they exactly look to do it um, will be interesting, because one of the big differences, I think, bringing the Killjoy here instead of the Cypher, like I already mentioned, is you're losing out on a lot of the value or pressure that uh, the Cypher player usually creates outside of A using those Cyber Cages. You see a lot of variations in compositions where you have that Lurk player just constantly keeping on the, the A pressure. And, uh, you know, that can also come in the form of a Killjoy, some, uh, not a Killjoy, sorry, uh, in the form of a Viper sometimes because you have the Toxic screen. Uh, it's really nice to be able to scale up behind as well if you want to go for that Execute. But uh, in terms of what they're going to be doing here, it, it looks as if maybe the default is just that much more heavy towards the A side generally. In terms of how the defence are setting up, there is that much heavier push as well. So, going to be starting off with a real brawl between these two. The Jet immediately going up towards that top ramp. And Jiggly just jiggling with the oh, death at this point. That's two players. Make it three. All being caught out. Monkey's able to get one back. But, I mean, has it just like that. When you move into a stack, especially when your Sentinel's there, you all get a pretty grisly death. Yeah, it's um, it's a very quick sweep that we end up seeing coming into this game as well. Crescent Coyote's 15th seed in the tournament, whereas Engineers are first. So while we've had a couple of 2-0s already in the playoffs and those usually falling to the favourites, it's a good start for them here to take that defender's pistol and nab any opportunity that BT Engineers have to immediately get on the board. Look at the Rays actually isolated all towards mid as well. Although the players look to not necessarily run down, but they're certainly going to run down in towards A. And I mean, one player already caught out that being jiggly. The rest of the stack is in towards heaven and now engaging. They've even been able to get a pick. Big one there, but it's that Rays that's just distracting a couple of the players elsewhere. Yeah, both Killjoy players trading out one another with the uh, classic there. Uh, Jack Black. Looking for some mid-control on top of this wall. And BT engineers don't actually want to send it in A, which I like the idea of. Uh, you see this quite often, taking a pick somewhere, resetting, and then just hitting the other side of the map, especially on a round like this, where Crescent Coyotes, they have the weapon advantage. BT engineers need to try and do something special if they want to... Uh, sort this one out but as soon as that barrier orb is gone in mid now the defense is thrown into a little more disarray and i'm maybe expecting them to clear here doggy's gonna hear these steps i was just about to say might have looked to retiming but ends up standing frozen inside the smoke uh, the spike will get planted but that is all there is going for the attackers of bt this round well i mean uh, just a little bit of uh, I don't I'm trying to force an issue that don't real. Uh, I was oh. gonna say don't make the internet joke, man, please. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say it's just gonna try to just say like try to force an issue that realistically shouldn't be forced. Yeah. Um, you know, like trying to run through on A, and this is why like we see that that viper wall always going down on A when you watch like the viper or even the cipher cages, etc. Um, <laughs> And it's interesting, it's actually the, the brim that's working out better, but I wonder if this is just going to be a very, very defender-sided split. Yeah, we're going to have to see how that pans out coming into the bonus. And one thing to mention about what we've just seen there as well, a little bit of micro, making sure that that final spectre is held on to with so much time left on the spike, it was halved. Uh, giving Pivers an opportunity to, uh, to get that one picked up. In terms of all prioritization, I think it was actually Destroy Lonely on the Sage that uh, that took the orb there. So you can see them trying to get that built up, but uh, only two away on the Killjoy player. So that's the more realistic outcome uh, when we look at these early ultimates. Jiggly in, trying to go for a fast play, but separated from the rest of the team, there will not be a trade. And that is the first of the two duelists lost. 
It's not ideal when you take these one versus one engagements. Looks like Titono tries to do it there. Punished for it. Spike will go down, but what does the rest of the team look to do there, Hazard? The KG is going to solo fight in towards CT. The rest looking to bust out from heaven. This needs to be a real mm. coordinated effort yeah. as the players look to set up their post plan already. Flying in with the Satchels. It's another duelist player dropping on a solo engagement. Trades coming through and doing a decent job here, Crescent. The double peak will deny, however. And that is going to mean that BT Engineers get on the board. In the round, they're expected to, albeit, but Crescent Coyotes still causing them quite a few issues. Already the issues are oh, unlucky for Jiggly with that Bucky, but yeah, stuff like this, like the fact that what that's two um, 1v1s that we've seen, there was plenty more, you need to be kind of coordinated and ready to swing off one another, that's why that uh, kind of last position on the post plant was so strong when you had the two players working together to uh, stop any swings coming through uh, here, Hazard. Yeah. Just making sure that the setup is good. And I think that that's really important. Uh, something that I think can be exaggerated a lot over the weekend is fundamentals, sort of solo fights being yes. taken and whatnot. But uh, I don't think there's a reason why we've stressed it. <laughs> this tall frozen doggy does it all by themselves, picks up a phantom to even make things worse for Crescent Coyotes. This round has completely slipped from their grasps. And tall frozen doggy has done it all themselves. Very nicely done. The point I was trying to make is, yeah, fundamentals important, playing as a team important, but by the same margin, if you can do something like this, then uh, that can in itself turn around. I thought I was watching some sort of content creator there, has a, you know, it's like one of those like um, one of those like really weird, or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Dropping the judge and you know, judging all over the place. Um, good stuff for them. Back to an eco here for Crescent Coyotes, though. Yeah, it is. Uh, the one advantage that they do have coming into this round is that the lockdown is now available. I spoke about it before. Uh, it can be quite strong for the retake. I'm wondering if that was going to dictate the setup, but and you can already see this heavy B stack and uh, the Killjoy player actually looking for a little bit more. JXQ gets a nice shot on the Sheriff. Jack Black probably wants to try and recover the weapon. That's a dangerous TP from Frozen Doggy. JXQ with another. And just like that, Crescent Coyote's only a player behind. And work still to be done, but they can certainly do it. Ooh, nice shots. Uh, so it looks like it's going to depend upon mechanical ability, these two engagements between the two teams. And somehow BT Engineers come out the better mm. side of it, even though they give a chance to the Crescent Coyotes. Yeah, I've barely even had a chance to hand it off. All the fights just <laughs> being taken almost immediately oh, there. Yeah. You know what I mean? JXQ able to get a few kills. I mean, it's all frozen doggy. You can only do a TP play so many times before uh, <laughs> Crescent Coyotes get aware of it. Yeah. That one wasn't a, as crazy, I don't think, when you no. consider... I mean, even on the previous round, t TPing into your own dark cover is fine. But um, yeah, not clearing close. Difficult. And now we go to the full gun round. Crescent Coyotes yet again just posing issues, but BT Engineers are already happy with the round count. <laughs> that wall quickly disposed of. A little bit of pressure created in towards mid, but what is the reaction here? It's just to send straight in towards B. Actually, Omen oh, and oh, in oh. towards back C. That's identified where the sky was. A couple bits of utility come through, but realistically, they're not still dealt with the sky, but the swing out is punished, and Jack Black comes through with the trades. Three in a row for them, and well, there's only one left. It's Monkey up on heaven, and that's exactly where they'll ascend to. Equal at three apiece. Yeah. Nicely, nicely done. BT Engineers uh, not able to get that fourth round. And yet again, it's a situation where Jiggly Dingle has gone down uh, on a solo engagement, just sort of dashing in front of the rest of the team. And this is fine, all right? There's nothing wrong with doing that as the Jet. You just need to be well supported. Uh, one of the issues with the composition here, though, for, uh, for BT Engineers is that you don't really have too much to support that. You're either sending Majestic Nuts in with them on the double satchel, or you're finding some kind of way to line up a paranoia. Didn't seem as if it was happening there, and well, maybe they don't need it. Nice kill from the classic. Uh, but Jack Black does get a second chance. 
Look at the players already trying to get on towards site, but rather than what we would see previously, previously about a clinical nature in terms of clearing out the site, it's anything but. And they've left a KJ to go upset. The rest of the players have came through. Hazard. There's only one player <laughs> left. It's Tall Frozen Doggy. They're even trying to knife. It's like watching you in ranked. Anyway, it'll be four to three for Crescent Coyotes. Look, for, for those watching, I gotta save faith here a little bit. Um, I got I got a few knife kills in in ranked today. I was definitely not the one on the receiving end uh, of any of that. This was nice from from Jiggly Dingle, sort of flying in there. Uh, it's one of those ones where if you can fly in and take a fight like that and win, it looks great. If you end up losing, then you're starting to hit your head against the wall just a little bit. But um, there we have it. Crescent Coyotes now taking the lead back for themselves and coming into this one, big swing round. It can be a big decider and already the players all the way from, I guess, down range try to fire a couple of shots and realistically it's a couple of um, hits and misses. Paint shells flying through and the players have all split up even with knives out. They will be punished and three players remain. One's trying to pose a threat through mid but the rest out on towards ramp. The smoke's from the brim perfect and on lesser weaponry they will just be chased down. That's exactly what happens. Flawless round from Crescent Coyotes on one which, like I said, coming into it, has a lot of value for them. BT Engineers, it's sort of low on credits. They are going to be able to buy back into this one, albeit Majestic Nuts going to be picking up the judge instead of a rifle, which makes it a little more difficult. Uh, they've not really burnt through any of these alts. I think neither of these teams have really chose to invest too much. We had a couple... Uh, on the previous two, for Crescent Coyotes at least, but um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a difficult one, right? You want to be cycling these ults with the most value possible, but you also don't want to be using them so sparingly that um, they're not really having any pivotal impact on the round. So it will be interesting uh, to see when that involvement comes through. When you just look at the, the raw amount of frags, I think, uh, that both of these teams yeah. have been able to get, Crescent Coyotes have so many more kills. Yeah, big time. I think this is um, Val the Valorant that, 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 for instance, is probably the one that we like the most. Or I'd say the most efficient in our minds has a, and certainly one with uh, that uses a lot of util and a lot of team play. Whereas this has been a lot on the more individual basic, uh, basic yeah. something that you would maybe see on like a Carmine Core or whatever. I love how you had to had to find some way to, to get the Carmine Core reference in uh, <laughs> during the stream. They're my favourite team. It's it's almost an inevitability at this point. Yes. But, um, yeah, nothing nothing really too Carmine Core about what we've seen so far, especially when you look at the comps. Unlike yesterday, when yes, we had uh, so some Gecko in there. But yeah, um, yeah uh, I think we just a slight technical issue there as we were cycling through the replays. But hopefully that has now been resolved and we are um, we are in position to be taking this into the next. But as that one went past so quickly, like you mentioned, uh, now BT engineers fall onto um, the lesser weaponry, or at least perhaps they've reconsidered it in the time that they had available. I think if you are on the side of BT Engineers and that's who you're wanting to support for this match, um, one thing that you can take, I guess, not great promise, but like kind of a little bit of comfort in is the fact that, I mean, they've already got three rounds, Hazard, and you're moving into defence with a double sentinel. Yeah, exactly that. Uh, BT Engineers, this is their map pick as well, we have to reiterate. Um, currently, three rounds on the attack is just fine. They want a little bit more, of course. It's a double duelist setup as well, so uh, aggression should be the forte, or at least coordinating that. Not really coming through right now. Bit of a disparity there as Doggy falls as the solo uh, player trying to create some pressure outside of A. No sky smoke down to delay any sort of push from mid, and I think the guys on the side of Crescent Coyotes have an idea or do so now after the swing from Monkey and Majestic one player left it's Squiggly spikes down you have a res I mean realistically you're wanting to waste that on an equal probably not as the players now look to try and defend the spike and do so successfully Crescent Coyotes get on towards seven and uh, look to try and extend the lead as much as possible yeah and it's, uh, yet again, very shy investment. They've not had to do too much here. It's just taking the gun jewels, winning them out. Yes, it's an eco, 
But uh, not really too much being done by BT engineers to trouble that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. In previous rounds, sometimes you see those ecos look a little more dangerous. And that's because yeah. there's some kind of a setup behind it. An adjustment has been made, some form of adaptation. And I think right now, both of these teams are very much just at the grindstone every single round. Not too many deviations are actually being created by either of them. Mid will dealt with, as it usually is. How do BT engineers go from here to find a result? Mm, I'm trying to, I guess, dealing with the mid wall creates that little bit of pressure, but someone will have to watch it, but it's about the steps after. Yeah. Already GXQ has found that jet, but the crossfires have been set up, being able to dash out. <laughs> Unfortunately, GXQ does not swing when they probably should. There's more and more just delaying wait as we see gunfights oh. happening. The spikes just left out in heaven. Doggy has to try and find it back. A couple kills go their way. Already space created in vent. And the From the Shadows will allow safe passage to the site. An open plant taken up. But what do the positions look like off the back of this? There is the lockdown available and you fully expect it to be invested. Squiggly now walling off from that side has pretty much put a, a block between these two. Uh, players and in fact Pivis has moved all the way into elbow before using this this is going to completely deny anyone from holding in that heaven position they're forced to take the fight so no they're going to lose them both Pivis claims a couple skulls and picks up Crescent's eighth yeah that's a massive round because that was a rifle round that was a full buy and Again, Hazard is one of these ones where the eco just does not favour the attackers in this situation. The trades were actually really good. Nice team play by the Crescent Coyotes, but it's just this little bit at the end, uh, how they play the spike, are just extremely poor. Mm. Yeah, it's... um. It's a really weird one. You have this double challenge, and then even the dark cover dropping onto the spike, which I'm not really too sure what the purpose of that was necessarily. But uh, yeah, BT engineers needing to engineer themselves something uh, a little different here to shake the balance. Going for the fast day, you have the Killjoy utility there to slow things down, but both duelist players can bypass it. Titono trades out one for one. The Sage player lost the raid. The res no longer in play. Shouldn't be any more ultimates in this round with the Orbital Strike also Ooh. taken offline. Big damage as Jack Black looks to capitalize, but it won't happen. Plant going down. That's a fast retake as well as the players come in from left, right and centre. Lovely shots from GXQ as the Guiding Light tries to clear close but it's lonely. Maybe all alone in this situation. One versus one and a tilth. Not ideal. BT Engineers capitalise. Eight to four right now on this half hazard. Yeah. And do um, uh, you know something? Uh, BT Engineers could easily come back into this one. Uh -huh. I was I was just about to resound your thoughts there exactly. Right. Um, BT Engineers, that is the round that you needed. Yeah. They, it took a while for them to pick it up, albeit. Uh, six rounds, in fact, in a row, which Crescent Coyotes were enabled themselves. But I think that this scoreline is reflective of a very standard split, as we're currently yeah. seeing it. At least if that is for the defender attacker bias to sort of hold true as it usually does. Uh, BT Engineers mount. Now moving on to the defense and I want to know what these setups look like and perhaps mm. if Crescent Coyotes are going to do anything um, to reflex against that because that's something which I think was somewhat lacking on the attack from BT and as a result basically the reason why they weren't able to pick up more rounds. Players are going straight up towards ramp, and this smoke just denies any intel if they try to get out. But as they move through, oh. they walk straight in towards a shorty. Big punishment there, but the players have already got through in towards ropes. Unfortunately for Tall Frozen Doggy, they don't have the information that they perhaps need as they continue to make steps forward to get punished. It's that to three versus four. Spike's still stuck here. The players now looking towards, look at me, has a yeah, you've got JXQ already with an advanced position. Two players there, Majestic Nuts trying to play the, the contact off of their Sage player. Uh, but already, uh, BT Engineers, the rest of the players, Jiggly, moving in through the back in support. Nuts seems to be able to do it all themselves. And this places Totono in a 1v3, which they cannot win. That quick pursuit through vents shuts out every single chance. And both teams now taking their own defender pistol round. It's going to be a big round indeed for 
BT engineers deny increasing coyotes, uh, the pistol and no, and after that the anti eco as well, which you would almost I don't want to say need, but like as a big help when you're on the attacking side. BT engineers now are going to at least half the Crescent Coyotes lead if the if the kind of result goes the way that we expect it to. Mm. Uh, they have the better weaponry here. It's only a single sheriff that has been invested on the Crescent Coyotes side. Monkey. We trying to defend A off the back of the turret. Has the alarm bot up in heaven. Mistletoe trying to make love under it in the form of some bullets into these players. They seem to connect and onto the ghost. It will also follow up nicely. The kill is there though. JXQ's managed to bag themselves this spectre. Spike inside the site and it will be getting planted. Play a disadvantage for Crescent Coyotes, but if they work these angles to their favor and play the numbers, even this lurk from sewers could be huge. Ah, oh, no, but look, it's already been cleared. Big stuff from Squiggly. The player's already looking to get in towards this site, and Majestic, with a couple of Majestic satchels, will convert. Leaving him two off of that showstopper as well, Hazard. Yeah, very nicely done. Already building into the ultimates here. And the Duelist ultimates, I don't think it's going to be too strong as what no. um, Crescent have to try and work with. That orbital strike could be really dangerous in terms of an execute, especially when you have those slow orbs on the Sage to pair it with. Uh, yeah. But here, it's unfortunate for Lonely in that position, trying to play the Lurk, because you ultimately have to buy a timing. You're a player down, yeah. and you know that the pressure is going to be piled on, considering how restricted the positioning of your teammates is in sight. Uh, they just don't quite pan out for it uh, in their favor this time around. Now we go into the big one, uh, the full invest for Crescent Coyotes. What can they do here to start building on that lead? Something else to think about is Crescent Coyotes realistically should be better of the two teams on the attack. I'm not saying they're gonna be, that automatically means that they're going to win mm. so many rounds or X many rounds. It just means that uh, they should have a bit more success just due to the fact you've got that initiation of the sky have this slow prepared already and four players sat behind it but what is the util off the back it seems to be the nade the wall splits them apart how much damage does it do quite frankly not enough nine finds both players it's a double entry in a three versus three as jiggly can pick one off in main this is going to be an issue now which crescent need to deal with what is the reaction it seems as if they're hesitating the player's slowly walking through and clearing things. Monkey, though, just gets pushed back ever so slightly. The marshal creeping through. What can you find? You can find Totono. Getting that advantage. It's traded back basically straight away. And the advantage taken. Tall Frozen Doggy at long range won't be that effective. And we see that. 9 to 6. That advantage getting regrown a little bit. Yeah, nice work from the Jiggly Jet there to sort of nestle themselves in the woodwork of B, make it really difficult for Crescent to extract that kill. That's the decision ultimately that they have to make and why we see the hesitation in tower. Are you committing to this B execute where you've just lost a player? You no longer have that main control. If you are, there has to be that prioritization to find the kill and instead, uh, Totono just decides to leave it alone, places uh, the, uh, all, the sky smoke there and takes up the policy of of what you can't see can't hurt you. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, but they do convert the round, and that is the most important thing. Operator now in Jiggly's hands. This could be an oh. issue. The wall gets shot out. An illusion of safety evaporates before their eyes, and BT engineers have dropped their first player. And this is why we like to see the wall being used as more of a delay rather than information gain. Mm. That's essentially the two ways it can be used here, as in, uh, well, straight away, I mean, most of the times that wall gets shot out, you lose your information and you lose, you lose 400 credits in that wall. It's the coordination as well. In my eyes, I actually prefer the wall not to be placed until Jiggly yeah. has at least had one bite at it with the operator. Yeah. That's where you've bought it for, to challenge an area of the map, that one being mid, and unfortunately it doesn't pan out. Well, the player's now moving straight in towards A, the molly's being popped, and Monkey gets at least one with the Aries, which is big. And elsewhere, though, the player's now having to come through at a disadvantage yeah. in the retake. We are going to see a showstopper at least get one back. It's going all even as the spike goes down. I was just about to say, BT in such a great position for this fast retake, and finally... They do press the go button. Paranoia coming in. Little capitalization. Players starting to move through, but oh, pivots no. could be pivotal. Just walking this back line in from main. And in fact, Crescent will clean things up on the front lines themselves. 
Uh, the operator just being wavered there for a moment, but they won't buy into it. BT not getting the same kind of value from this pickup. No, oh, it's really not ideal. And again, it's that uh, first pick that Crescent Coyotes are able to make work. I mean, it, the good thing is those BT engineers are able to even it out, but they just press the ba brakes for a second, which allows the Coyotes to almost, I guess, reposture themselves, yeah. fix what was going wrong, and, and they just went from there. It's that stabilization, right? I think Crescent Coyotes, if they're given a moment in any of these rounds to set up how they want to, they are getting the much more favorable end of it. Okay. Yeah. While BT Engineers, they come in this, being the number one seed, this being their map pick, they're looking second best at this point in time, and Crescent Coyotes are certainly going to make them work. I think a lot of this is based on that util game, and they have plenty left in this eco round. Oh no, it's two for one here for Pivers. Completely free for them. Squiggly at least gets one back. But it's still that advantage with the time ticking away. They're playing together, they're playing in twos. That's exactly what we want to see. And it's just continuous one after one engagements by the BT engineers. Yeah, Crescent Crosies, like I said, the amount of utility that they have to siege this site. And even now, the Trailblazer being used to just meticulously clear out heaven. Ziggly clears out one of the first three players. The plant isn't really for heaven here, so far from ideal, but the cross being held and there's nothing you can do to salvage that one up to an 11th. And this next gun round is basically going to decide the whole map. Yeah, because uh, now and if it's lost, BT Engineers move on towards an eco. We're even getting a glass cannon from Jiggly um, due to that. I guess they have the the, the blade storm for the next round if they want mm. to, to play for that. I mean, the only problem is, is Crescent Coyotes, they can play for every single ultimate till the end uh, for, for the next two rounds, I guess. Yeah, and with this double duelist set up as well, and like, some of the space-taking capabilities you have, the knowledge that Crescent Coyotes have been vividly playing this A, I would love to have seen BT Engineers just prioritize getting one of the alts online because that is a department they're currently lacking and not going to happen. Crescent Coyotes have everything to play with. Yeah, Pivers one off the lockdown. The most important you could argue. The Queen to the chessboard. But in terms of how this chessboard has been playing, it's one with a lack of information. A little bit of spam. And the ball players at the top of ramp. Just unfortunately they see the shoulder, nothing capitalised. Majestic pushed out of heaven. This space gonna have to be Ooh. pivotal and Pivers being that pivotal player. It's down to four versus four. Showstopper to enter in towards the site. Jack Blackstreet in there. Unfortunately for them, it comes up huge. Majestic is welcoming huge in their own right. Two versus two right now. Playing for the ultimate, I'd imagine. Off the brim, but maybe not anymore. It's just a one versus two right now. Jack Black and you need to come through with a melody of death, but unfortunately that melody of death will be for your funeral. Yeah, BT Engineers pick up a huge round there uh, to take it. Quick on the retake after Jack Black goes flying in. But by this time, th now we're seeing the ideas in terms of um, what I was saying when it comes to adaptations be at the forefront of how this game is won if you are Crescent Coyotes. They've just gone for the same A execute the last three rounds in a row and it's made it really easy for BT engineers to see it so telegraphed that they can just over rotate in, in some sense, right? Just go straight into that heavy stack and be postured to deal with the threat almost imminently. Oh, nice stuff there. The jet almost caught. Already able to look to dip out. That was a little bit dodgy on the first couple of bullets, but uh, capitalization anyway. Mm. Big res. We're back to a five versus four. And yet again, it's that point I was making about the Crescent Coyote's alt economy. You have so much to play with. The res coming through. And now you have the advantage from what was a very scrappy mid duel almost immediately. Refrag on towards the operator, taken out of play. There's a chance that BT Engineers could pick this up for themselves, but you look at how passive the setup is considering mid here, and uh, there's not too much that, that you can do in terms of value there. Yeah, being pushed out to the extremities of this site. Uh, tall frozen doggy tried to get some more information off the back of that, but it's actually a pretty late execution considering that that lockdown was going down, and that's just going to allow BT Engineers to execute or, or try and execute the retake off the back of that, and that's going to give them an oh. advantage because one player has just managed to re overgress. Three versus three has a, and they're just playing for delay now. Yeah, two players stuck in the corner get flushed out immediately. JXQ. 
does find a kill back and now Crescent Coyotes have the numbers and they can just grind BT Engineers all the way down. 12 to 7 and now they sit on that penultimate position of taking away their opponent's pick. I mean, th this was the side which started out on the defense. Yeah, they got a fairly decent half, 8-4, but I mean, it wasn't fully closed out. BT Engineers still fully in with a chance. Uh, unfortunately, it's just... It's only that, simply a chance, and Crescent Coyotes this time going into the B instead, take the jewels a little more forward coming, and uh, they are able to win out. The players of the Coyotes, well, I was going to say, we're more towards A, but no, they went towards mid this time. No Sage, while the likes, has actually been placed towards A main. The adaptation from BT Engineers in that aspect, but... Uh, it seems as if they are just going to slowly look to head through ropes. The mm. mid's been completely given up. Yeah, but look at the positioning. This is exactly why it's been given up. Jiggly has already activated this incredibly fast flank. Testing B main as they have done in the previous few rounds. Jet easy to disengage. Monkey engaging with the first fight. Pivots the entry on towards B heaven. Perhaps looking to materialize some form of a lurk. But it's one which will never come now. The players seem to be executing paranoia. Will halt them in their tracks. Doggy just doesn't have the weaponry to be doing it, but the showstopper could be huge and is. Round shut out in flawless fashion. BT Engineers, they walk away with an eight. Massive. 12 to 8 now. Crescent Coyotes, a uh, big let in for the BT Engineers there, especially considering that was a thrifty round. Big ultimate to come through. And you know what? Now, well, all rifles once again has it, and Crescent Coyote's by slightly broken. Yeah, it is. And that's actually helped out the BT Engineers' economy, which you know, it shouldn't be running into problems anytime soon. Business as usual, they'll be open doors just as long as they're still in this game. But that free set of rifles that they've picked up will certainly help. And uh, they do have a lockdown now available. Already setting up to defend this A and both duelist players rotating through. In fact, I think this looks to be a full rotate of five. They understand the Coyote's game plan. The conditioning's definitely set. Coyote's, if they ro rotated away from this size up... Mm could find themselves in a pretty fortunate situation on that yes. B site. Exactly, this is what I'm talking about, right? Crescent Coyotes have conditioned this A so heavy that BT Engineers are rotating into it almost instantaneously. There is no second layer to it, however, though. This is just uh, the straight up five players here. They've frozen, cut noise, tried to make it a bit easier for themselves and will now try and re-enter. Well, they do so. Entering in with only one bit of contact. What shot from Jiggly! Straight through, the players are dropping left, right and centre. They've been completely flashed by that paranoia. And now it's all up to Pivels and they're knowing exactly where they are. As we see Jiggly <laughs> coming through with a little bit of a risk. Yeah. Yeah. You're wondering if they've got a call, maybe, that Pivers was low in that situation. I don't yeah. know why else the Jet will be flying with a classic, but Monkey will shut things up. BT Engineers find their ninth. Now within three, and this starts to look a lot more doable. Yeah, it really does, because you get that momentum on your side. Coyotes start to doubt what they're up to, start to doubt everything. And I mean, realistically, wasn't the worst shout in the world? Mm. Um, because it's either you head in towards a B where a KJ is set up, or you head in towards three players where it was mostly going to be gun jewels, and gun jewels just fell into the hands of the BT engineers. Yeah, with this buy Sp coming through, I was just about to say, it looks like Crescent Curtis are only going to get a couple more buys. And uh, yeah, those ults that they were enjoying before have dried up. Here. Yeah. Look at the spike as well. Yeah. Still just in spawn. I mean, sometimes you see that and it's a glitch, right? I know it pops up yeah, in games yeah, sometimes, uh, but uh, no glitch about that. I guess they can just forget about the objective. Look for the kills on the sheriffs. <laughs> oh, that's the idea, you know, try and play for upgrades or anything. I mean, almost the biggest one there on towards an up. GXQ, I uh, won't be getting much of an opportunity for the rest of this round. Oh, I love the way that the voice is cut off there. It's like just a up. But uh, yeah, uh, the the op is in the op is in fact gone. Oh no, uh, Jiggly's oh. holding on to it. Sorry, taking uh, taking a couple kills already. And yeah, Crescent Coyotes, they've gone for what I like to call the mystery gang round. Right, they've split up and they've searched mm -hmm. for frags. They found a couple of them, uh, and now Jiggly's in a really difficult spot. Oh, it's stinky. It is stinky, has it? 
But the thing is, though, it's a one versus two, which, if it is played, stinky, it's a real chance in this round. Oh, it's, oh my god, no way. Uh, the thing is, the res is available here for BT Engineers, so they can bring a player back up. The same cannot be said for Destroy Lonely. And this is this is the one where we're talking about the spike. It's sat in spawn, so they actually oh, can't the even time. win the round. The time. I can't believe it. We said that it, the objective may be inconsequential, but it's what ends up denying an opportunity at taking it here. Destroy has to save. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What more can you say? They're trolling more than me using reverb, like mid-cast, man. Told What's me, going on? You told me, you told me, Hazza, you told me that uh, there was going to be no key corp in this uh, match. Yeah. You told me. That's, you promised that, me. Like, I mean, it's one thing to, like, not buy a gun uh, because you're AFK in spawn, but to leave the spike in spawn... I, I, on, on, I mean, like, this is just basic stuff. The, the agents yeah. have a voice line, voice line which <laughs> yeah. tells you that yeah. you've done it. I mean, I guess on the eco, you're perhaps not favouring yourself to win, but you're in it to win it, right? Every chance that you'll yeah. get. This is a little bit better, though, for Crescent Coyotes. At least it should be. Pivers has fallen. Yeah, that's a big loss here. Um, the op coming up once again. It seems to have this investment from Jiggly, once it's got going, has really been a stopping force. There's a little congregation in mid, a little meeting from the coyotes. Maybe a howl towards the moon. It doesn't doesn't look ideal. It, it really doesn't. Um, you can sort of see that frustrated glares. Uh, Jiggly just goes in, double dips and tries to find something. And it's not the first uh, occasion where we've actually seen that happen. And they get picked off. Squiggly able to, to find another one on A as JXQ's been caught out. The solo initiator trying to get things started, but not working so well for them on their lonesome. Four versus three as the players now walk in to what will probably be a, a favour or a majority in their favour just for oh. the say. The equal thing's out now. And now. Oh, there is still a race, though, Hazard. That's one thing you have to consider. They're not clear of the KG, and Destroy Lonely will find out exactly where they are. This is just turned into Jack Black's what? mission. This is a complete Jack Black story. It's an ace. Can it be an overkill? One player left. No, it can't. Monkey comes through massive. Well, I mean, if it was an overkill, Monkey still with picking up three is half of what Jack Black was able to imprint on the round taking it into their own hands, right? It was less School of Rock, but class was in session, in fact. Uh, Monkey able to pull a trick of their own out of the bag and close it off. But even here, just investing the showstopper to take down the rest player, that is someone in flow state. You are literally uh, just taking kills left, right, and center. Every single engagement. Overheat is not even a word in the dictionary at that point in time. But um, now it has come to this, round 24. Last chance saloon for Crescent Coyotes to take this one in regulation. Oh. It's it the same up? play again. Every single time pushing from behind. It oh. capitalizes. This is really disappointing because now the worst thing about this is the fact that they're going to be pushing in towards an AWP. It's almost guaranteed overtime at this point. And this is the problem that you have with using a brim because, I mean... It's just engagements after engagements, not wanting to waste the sky smokes on spots that realistically um, you're going to lose the smoke on. And, and look at how many alts Crescent had available for them. Three. Mm -hmm. Seekers, Orbital Strike, Lockdown. Not sure if all of those had just come online from the players dropping, but even from that position, if you're within one, the alt orb is right in front of you on the screen here. You can see it in B main. There's a chance that they take it. I wonder. But you've not seen that prioritization taken. I wonder what the res would what the res is on just now. Obviously, I don't know. If Caroline can hear us if she could put it up just to, so we I, can I, see. I think it's it was like three away, but uh, yeah. Left. The main point to be taking is that it's been a few rounds and we've still not seen it come through. Crescent Coyote is just not prioritizing uh, getting these yeah. ultimates up, and I don't mm. think they're going to clear back sight here. No, I don't think they are either. Majestic just waits, arms wide open, ready to capitalise and does so. One player left, the panic, you can see it in the eyes as both satchels come through, but Destroy Lonely mm. destroys Majestic. Now in a one versus two, there is the res available there and it is, is. going to be used. We're back to 2v2. And it's Jack Black that comes online, a satchel of their own to disengage. 
would have to be a huge clutch and they can't do it. I mean, so many times they're present in the round. Mm. Something I want to pick apart is how Crescent Coyotes, it, like, all of this offense has just been Jack Black. Like, I'm being serious. You see... Every single time they're winning a fight, it's Jack just taking this solo engagement, winning it out, uh, and then randomly there's a Coyote player somewhere on the map that's just fallen by themselves. And it's this lack of being able to refrag anything that's going on for them right now, which is really the Achilles heel. The players of Crescent Coyotes at least get a break from that though, Hazza. They can now move on towards their defence, maybe get a little bit of a reset, but does the doubt start to creep in here? That's the question I'm starting to wonder because uh, these players haven't won a round in mm. oh, what feels like forever. Yeah, we've seen two eight four halves now, which I said was somewhat the standard, but maybe I wasn't expecting it to be like that uh, when Crescent Coyotes had placed themselves nicely in a position to be closing. And they had... Was it four or five map points to, to try and shut it down? And uh, Totono has opened it up at least. Pivers as well involved. This defense starting to, to run on a high as it was before. Yeah, good stuff. Jake Lee's got we with the... Oh, something you'd expect to. Spike still down and pretty much in the open. As they cycle through all the weapons here. Trying right. to see what they can... Maybe look for a better skin or whatnot. Look for some sort of, uh, I guess, power. The power not it's there. A, oh, the oh, Dirk of Vandal, right? It's the Dirk of Vandal. Same, same one that I use. Uh, right, uh, I was going right to see. With the red glitch pop. It, it, uh, I mean, it is nice, but uh, mm -hmm. whether that was necessary or not, I don't know. I think, I guess you want to be on the Vandal because it's yeah. going to be um, that 156 to the head instead of the 140, right? You know that you're going to be yeah. getting uh, the kill if you're headshotting someone, which on low HP has to be a priority. But Crescent yeah. Coyotes, they find that round. Now back to the attack. What can they do? Seems to be the standard. Standard A hit, RBT engineers prepared for this. It's going to be the wall for the contact, and uh, the information is certainly Ooh. there. I like that blast pack. Jack Black really been really good on it, and Tall Frozen Doggy has been punished, and there's another punishment. Jack Black 9 already being found, and that's a big pointy bit to the spear gone. Shut out of this now as well. I'm not sure whether Pivers wants to try and do something here. Doggy certainly doesn't have to. Uh, I was wondering for a moment if they were going to creep inside their own smoke and get picked off, but it doesn't happen. A lot more resolute. Something that we can say about Jiggly's playstyle is they love to look for these fights. And if you take the spike from Totono here, that could be the round. And it has fallen. It's a KG up in heaven. It could somewhat rescue this, but the steps already been given. The audio cues there for Tall Frozen Doggy, but not good enough on the engagement. And look at this, Pivers has found a chance. The knife slipped between the shoulder blades, and here comes Destroy, that's massive. Now the spike can be collected. BT engineers need to somehow guess where this execution is going to be, because there's so many engagements mm. happening all across the map. It was a, a great kill that we saw initially from Jiggly, but then there's no extra response to that. BT Engineers just concede it, and the position of Pivers is capitalized. Jiggly walking out into the open, somehow manages to at least find one onto JXQ, who seem to have a target on their back for the majority of this game. But uh, as the refrag comes through, the trade is there. Majestic Nuts is gonna do it all. It's more one versus one, Taza. Yeah. One versus one versus one versus... Well, I'm not going to do it for the full 10, but yeah, you get the right. idea. It, it's just so many solo engagements being taken. And like, look, we said this before. We said, fun, uh, like, th there's two sides to it. One, the fundamentals are super important. That Im also involves playing your numbers, playing together. Destroy goes for something a bit aggressive there. Piva's not even prepared for Nut's position. And, uh, yeah, while th the other side of that is it's a brilliant individual play, it has been gifted to them. There, there is absolutely nothing uh, that has sort of prevented that from being the case. Well, it's back towards round... I don't want to say round one, but you get the idea. It's yeah. back round to the start. Round. Reset, reset, reset. We're in deadlock. Reset. Juice. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> right, well, the players are just going to head straight in. It's button heads at this point as the players look to hit in towards A and they're making sure to clear every corner, as we've seen, I think, a, a rat play from every corner on this site of A. But look at the quick response from Crescent Coyotes. They're ready to go whenever they can get the util set and gone. Trailblazer clears out towards this elbow spot, but this jet we've got to be watching out for on mm -hmm. top of ramp hazard. I was just about to say, uh, quite a few of these attacking rounds, they've missed that double layer as the first line comes in, and that might just be it. I don't think we're going to see any capitalization here from Jiggly's position. There's just too much to do. As soon as you find a single frag, the whole world is against you. And Crescent Coyotes are living in it. They find the defender's scythe, as these teams have both been able to do in numbers. It feels as if whoever picks up an attacking round first is likely to be the one walking away with it. And Crescent Coates, he's now presented with a brilliant opportunity to finally see this over the line. But um, there's a problem with that statement. And it's uh, how many times have we seen... Yeah. Crescent Coyotes actually win out an attack. You're saying, finally see it over the line. I mean, we could be in deadlock for a while. Yeah, we certainly could. I mean, name a more iconic duo, split and overtimes. It's happening very, very often. BT engineers don't really have to try and radicalize what it is that they've been doing here. I, I, I think, yeah, they won the defender round last time, albeit on the technicality of some individual heroics. But... Um, I mean, the setup here looks to be okay. We've got an Odin now involved. Oh, God. Monkey bearing down from the heavens, trying to be that god with a thunder spear, a lightning spear in their hands, and we'll do it. There's the first kill. That might just be enough. Oh, okay. There's a little bit of response there. Majestic tries to get in on the mix, but don't go for the spike plant right now. Not when there's not enough players there. We are going to get the heal come through from the sky, not wanting to waste that healing orb because it's oh, better on other damage. opponents. That's big. Oh, unfortunately, not able to capitalise off the blast pack. Maybe a second would do it. As we are going to see the paranoia come through that but that wall. That's going to be massive, though, but the opportunity is gone. Big gate and late, and crazy coyotes come alive. The hill there, the hill of death. Two versus one. What can Jiggly do? Well, you'll need to find someone at least to have a chance as time ticks away. Even to double up with that molly will give the chance towards the crazy coyotes, and Tetono will finish it out. Yeah, finally able to rectify it. Like I said there, for like, and if this double duelist is going to enable them to have more success in that department, then I'm happy to back it, especially at this level as well. Sometimes you do just have to focus on comfortability and mm. what you can get the most out of, and perhaps that might just be might just be the way to see this through. As um, we move through, you know something? I guess Crescent Coyotes will probably not have... I don't want to say as much a problem, but you've also got to think that that raise is such much more of a defensive, side, defensive sided um, kind of duelist. That's an, another thing to be thinking about as we head mm -hmm. into this. Yeah, the only issue is you're trading it off for a lot of the supportive utility that KO will offer and I think the biggest thing for me here is going to be that ultimate, the null command, mm. what you have to shut things out there, how your retakes are going to be looking on your defenders half here for Crescent Coyotes because this could be a fairly gnarly start um, by all means if they're not able to get up to a sort of decent running level almost immediately Pretty gnarly start indeed but um... Okay bro <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, yeah, it's been a pretty slow start for both teams. The Jet looking to just check out that mid spot. I mean, it's the usual KG looking in towards tiles that you see across so many teams. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's the 4-1 split, the yeah. classic lurk play in through mid, setting up for the A pistol. This is something that Crescent Cote should be aware of. I'm not a massive fan of Jack playing off the alarm bot here uh, in market, but as soon as that initial contact is felt, the rotate should be coming through. Already, the player's looking to engage. A lot of bullets thrown, and it's Tall Frozen Doggy again with a shorty. Players starting to go in towards hell, but oh, players put in towards hell. Big ghost play, and the shorty comes through once again. Only one player left punished for. Uh, trying to take those engagements out on the open. Uh, that's going to be 1-0 to the BT Engineers. Yeah, BT Engineers 
able to find that first one, craft out an early result. Monkey even buying into the uh, the Vandal or the Phantom here. I don't know which one they, they want to end up picking. It is going to be the Vandal. Cheers, appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I mean, a fairly healthy buy across the board. Opting for heavy shields and a lot of these players uh, with the Spectre. I can't say I'm the biggest fan of, of the Spectre on the second round. I would much prefer a Bulldog just to sort of yeah. have that healthier bonus in the current meta that we're playing. But yeah. Um, not really too much of an issue, right? They're just going to be looking to steamroll into the site. The 4-1 split has congregated now to be all five players, Executive K. Yeah, and look at the read from Crescent Coyotes. Nice shots from GXQ, but that's all it's going to be is they're quickly taken out. Four versus four at the situation, waiting for the KG to congregate with the rest of the players. And it seems as if there's going to be a little bit of shorty punishment oh. of their own from the Coyotes, completely vacated out from heaven. And now we're going to see a Spectre do what? This is really looking like a good... Eco, I have not thought about Titono. Up on heaven, the Crescent Coyotes come through, although the rest are still oh. breaking to come out of shot. Two versus one, still a lot of util as the players come through and swing the last on. Very, very low HP. All it takes is one spray of that spectre, and it will be a haunting round for the BT engineers. And what I was speaking about in the pre-round of having a healthy bonus is now completely out the window. If you fully invest here, you're not going to have any credits for the next. That is quite simply uh, what the situation looks like for BT Engineers. Really nicely worked by Crescent Coyotes. And when I was coming in, speaking of fundamentals, they just play the numbers game on this retake, which I think is really important. We've seen already the value as well that uh, Jack Black's paint shells can have being saved mm, yeah. into these sort of late round scenarios to do a lot of the clearing work that you're missing out by not having that KO. So already playing very nicely uh, with what they have and, and using that stylistically to approach it in a positive light. Now the BT engineers have to play through Mooncake on the Phantom. Interestingly, they're not wanting to play in through Jiggly by giving that Hero Vandal or Hero Rifle too. Yeah. But the good thing is also they've been farming up these ultimate orbs look towards what yes. Mooncake has and it's one away from a lockdown. That is exactly the point that, that I was just about to make. You have that first orb taken, but it seems as if BT haven't really committed to an idea yet. I think there's probably the semblance of a finish A here with the control that they already have established. You can get that second orb up and running and then you have the lockdown to use. Squiggly has to be careful on only a ghost and JXQ has shown them something here to perhaps draw some extra players in, but that's just passive information. The rotate should be able to come through from the defender's side and this will be an issue. Oh, shots there. There goes Destroy Lonely. The rifle's now starting to come alive, but they've not cleared the Sova. And the Sova's come through absolutely massive. What just happened to a GC? A ridiculous spray transfer from JXQ. Things that you love to see, just sat in the corner. Play the trigger discipline somewhat, right? A couple of gun barrels popping out, not fully going for it. Uh, just with the radius of the dark cover somewhat cloaking uh, Munki as they made their way into the site. But yeah, that one fairly half-baked from BT Engineers. You see them farming in towards uh, the lockdown, but then not really using it as a win condition on a round, which could be a huge springboard for their success in this map. Players again congregating outside of A. Nobody really taking much of an aggressive stance. It's been very much kind of you know, dropping out and letting players have that main control for the BT engineers. And it's that lockdown hasn't placed best. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the standard one to the corner means that uh, the players on the opposite end will be flushed to a similar position. Totono with three of their own and Jack Black getting in on the action as well. It's all duelists for this defender's side of Crescent Coyotes, at least on that round. And this is not now looking good at all for BT Engineers. We haven't seen either of these teams call a timeout so far yeah. during the series, but coming into your next gun round after this, if you can't find a result, I would favor them to make some changes. It's not only that, though. It's also the fact that uh, you had a big investment in the form of that lockdown, which didn't even, I guess, worry Crescent Coyotes. You saw that they set up with the, the fact that a player just went on towards the steps of heaven. There was nothing to follow up in terms of flashes or, or mollies or the likes just to push players into awkward scenarios, put that pressure on. And pressure now coming in the form of mid. A 1-3-1 one, one split. 
Yeah, and when I speak of making these small changes, I'm talking about how you pressure the map as well, because Crescent Coaties, they haven't had to fight mid the entirety of the time. You have the alarm bot up, you have Pivers out in the open with the knife, and Nuts is going to find the kill. A few more back from those duelist players we spoke of as they are running rampant. But still, worrying signs here, uh, at least that it were. Spike's completely out on B main. I know you're going to be forced in towards an awkward fight here. Mm. But, um, yeah, it's really awkward. Difficult. Uh, yeah. Difficult one. Uh, the, the Spike not really having too much of a bearing on the round there yeah, in the true. end. But, uh, yeah, coming into the gun round, this is the more important one. I think the BT engineers need to take some of the ideas they had on the previous and, and convert it into some real concrete success here. There are so many ults up on both sides. You have to be looking at using that null command, most likely, to make a strong execute happen. Think about... Um, all of the setup that you have on the Crescent Coty side and the fact that they have no remedy for this, right? They don't have a KO player. Make the most of that advantage and they'll do it. Well, we're heading straight in towards this. Execute. There's going to be straight in towards third gear and not going to stop. But look at this, Hazza. It's a big, massive Hunter's Fury all the way from the other side. But while that's been going on, it's pushed the players into awkward gunfights. BT Engineers have won those awkward gunfights, but not when there's a rocket launcher coming flying at you. Three versus three, and one versus ones are gifted all over the site. Spike down. A minute and ten to go. Utility in the pocket. And again, the players are disconnected from one another but it might just give enough time to flank Jack Black and win the round for the engineers. Now three apiece. That's a round which really should have gone uh, Crescent Coyote's way. they sort of very eager to be going for that fast playback through, offering up kills to a well-positioned BT Engineers side who were playing the numbers game. De facto, I think, when you look at what the setup was for them there to just hard push mm -hmm. off the back of the null command. But that's the reason exactly why as well I said they should be investing it coming into the round. It is exactly what you need to crack this nut of the Killjoy defense, which has been such an issue. Uh, the problem is, they've now flexed it onto A, not something which we've seen before. Not something that the engineers have seen before. And if they do come up against it, punishment, very easy as well. Because you'll be all vulnerable, trying to walk through mollies and the likes. Does the owl drone at least get any information? No. Uh, with that smoke, I wouldn't have liked to have seen that placed. Realistically, you're wanting to force the engineers in towards that main spot, in towards that KG setup, the aggressive setup, and with that being placed, now they're going to look to go elsewhere. Yeah, the tempo in this round, very slow from BT engineers, but now creeping into what looks to be an A split. Uh, the bulk of this Killjoy utility is for main, and uh, Pivers has just got to be careful that they don't find themselves isolated on this short position, that they can disengage and then play towards that strength of the retake that we've seen quite a lot. Pivers just waits. Look at this. Yeah, looking to swing out. Oh. And, I mean, that's the punishment. The shoulder just yeah. out ever so slightly and I just headshot him through the wall. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Needs to make sure they're in a position where you can sort of disengage quickly, that you're getting that passive information. You have the turret, so there's no reason to be hanging on to any kind of aggressive angle. Totono swings back nicely. Yeah, the swing back is nice indeed, but it's destroyal only on shot that we're realistically looking to play through to come from an angle which they're not expecting but it is expected and that's going to go fall in towards BT Engineers the Odin now looking to smite the last remaining players of the Engineers but there'll be no smiting for this round only praying for another Crescent Coyotes unfortunately unsuccessful leaving Engineers on towards four yeah, they fall to the wayside now they lose the advantage that they got just after they had finally surmounted what BT Engineers had done off the back of the pistol. And the buy begins to look a little ropey for them. The, uh, the credits that they previously enjoyed have now dried up. You're going to be getting a set of four rifles. Jack Black on the judge to offer something a little bit different. Sticking with this Killjoy A setup. And I'm starting to wonder whether if this one doesn't stick yet again. Uh, that we see another change come through from Crescent Coyote. Something that they were so hesitant to do last time around. Seems to be the flavour of how they're playing this defender side. Totono just hiding, punishes the KJ, dropping that U-Till. Oh, the dash is there if needed. It's not needed at this moment in time at all. Already close to getting the second dash online, but it's not to be. 
Jiggly now looks to overstay their welcome, even yeah. though it could give a big advantage towards the Coyotes. They're literally just yeah. trying to use the paint shells there to, to uh, play in tandem, the two duelist players, yes. which I think is a really good way of setting up nine times out of ten if you are just partnering up and Covered looking to up. take those fights. It's already worked out for them. They have the numbers. The delay should be there. Pivers falls again on another fight in short, and that means the nanos don't even go off. You're in a three versus three. The win condition of the Hunter's Fury is up. BT Engineers just have to play post and play time. Look at the jet, though. If this was a quick retake, this would favour the Coyotes, but they won't know about that. They won't yeah. know about the Jet looking to play upset, and that is your win condition, as well as that Hunter's Fury, if they go for it. And look at that, the Jet's creeping forward, although the race seems to know of an idea. That idea is profound, and it's all going to fall apart. Only one player left. Oh my god, I just got a bit excited there for a second, Hazard. This GXQ just made the impossible seem possible. Yeah, and, and that's really how it feels right now, I think, in the in the Coyote camp, because you're not quite hitting the heights that you should be. Totono gets the first two entries, and then I think you probably... Uh, did a little more than they needed to here. Could have just disengaged, had the dash available. Jack knows from the presence of Jiggly early in the round after losing their duelist teammate to expect them there in that position uh, on some kind of a late lurk that materializes. And unfortunately for them, now we're onto pistols. Uh, pistols are gonna be punished again, Hazard. Oh, look at this, Titono! Oh, I just thought for a second it's gonna be more than that. It's, oh! it's four! Two to two versus one, the spike can go down, but at what cost? Spike planted. Yeah, guns to be recollected. Doggy with everything to do, looking to go for this quick play round stairs. Doesn't know that the players have approached as swiftly as they had, but already done it. Flashes into sight, fakes it out, repeaks, and finds three of their own. A clutch to deny Crescent from moving up any further than three rounds. BT Engineers carry on a laboured one there. Even Totono with a no-looker, I think, uh, trying to go for an anti-flash in case the KO was going to pop their way out of that smoke. But a really difficult round to dissect, I think, especially when you look at Crescent Coyote's not coming in with much. That was the hero rifle. It was a hero indeed, but uh, just not the one that ends up winning the round. Doggy doing it instead. Yeah, and a bit of an anti-hero, you guess you could say there, Hazard. As we see another info dart being sent run. out. This is a fake on eh? And this is going to mm. pull the players already off B. No KJ utility to passively hold yeah. the site either. I guess the deduction the would be to, to make that it is a fake. But when the spike then starts to creep onto A, and the players who are looking to execute there haven't taken the space that the lockdown gave them, then you start to wonder what it is exactly the game plan has been for BT Engineers. It has forced a, a, a little... It's like a, a, a triple-layered fake right now. It's Totono. Nothing to fake about that. Just raw mechanical prowess as both of the duelist players yet again have that impact on the round. But, I, I mean, I really don't know what to say. Yet again, I'm left speechless by what we've seen. The players now slowly make their way on towards A as the Coyotes look to respond to what's already happening again. It's a, a little bit of, I guess, information. Or, I guess, the information that you get from the, yeah. the kind of hold of the map. And the KG turret confirms it, and a flawless round from the Coyotes. Yeah. Flawless from Crescent Coyotes. Failure for BT Engineers. Uh, they tried to set up this fake play into A, where they had already, you know, fairly overcommitted when they had full A main control with the uh, the Killjoy lockdown. No extra utility really coming out to the site. No space taken, like I said earlier. Then they courier the spike towards it. Then they looked to move back in through mid when Crescent Coyotes had rotated away from A initially, thinking that it was a fake on top of another fake. And Totono wins the round, you know, yet again, putting them in such a great position, just fragging out on that Vandal. I like this approach, though. Going for something different. In towards shot, they go. And with that, the fact that there isn't really much of a setup, an isolated one as Pivers is continuously overpeaked and overstayed mm. their welcome, it's going to be more of the same except Totono's there to support. 
I think that is the real difference maker here. The supportive play from Pivers when, uh, or supportive play to Pivers when they looked to be in such oh a difficult no. situation. The problem is that the lockdown should be destroyed. JXQ with the Hunter's Fury sending it in themselves and taking out their teammate. I can put you in the roster, I can take you out of it, and actually maybe just win the round all on their lonesome, they do. <laughs> Three kills to find it, five for Crescent Coyotes, and they finally resurge. Oh no, oh no, oh no, it's, it's calamity, and it's just... Oh. It's calculated calamity, yeah, Cairo, right? Is. Like, obviously, the players that we're seeing here are, are very good players. Individually, like, the fights that are being taken, they are no bozos. And I, I can say that quite comfortably. But then some of the macro game going on right now just leaves you scratching your head, I guess. On that round specifically, I don't think there were too many glaring mistakes. Yet again, though, it is just sort of Pivers solo A short, which happens to be my biggest issue with how the defense is being... Being played, but look, if you can get the spam on the on the off angle, maybe it doesn't matter. It's another one. Yeah, it is. And you know what? The spikes going down. The advantage will be there. It could. Oh, I was about to say you could at least bring back the KO online mm. and does so. There is Hunter Fury to play for in terms of the post plan, the win condition. But when that win condition starts to fall apart, when it just comes down to frags, it will favour the Crescent Coyotes, and you see that exactly in this situation. Yeah, uh, this looks to have familiar. Oh my goodness, familiar familiarity. With uh, with the previous map that we saw on Split, where Crescent Coyotes sort of struggled a little bit early on, uh, BT Engineers coming in as the first seed, ex expected to be the, and then they find that momentum. They finally are able to dig their heels in, and now have picked up enough rounds to make it a sufficient a sufficient half. Six six, you know, things looking comfortable enough. This one, again, sort of looking to be sent the distance in terms of how it is played out. Seems if these two teams like to send us through, the ringer has it, and I ain't mm. going to complain. Uh, that's exactly what I want to see. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, it's like you look at split. You had two eight four halves. Uh, that's with the defender bias now coming into this one. You've had, you know, a 6-6 six, six on a much more even map. It really is just the teams playing to what their strengths are. Jiggly, that is ridiculous. It annoys, I will be honest, it does annoy me when players um, aim in towards a wall, but when you can Go flick AFK like that, I don't just think hit it the mass. craziest shot you've yeah. ever seen. Yeah, exactly. Um, no one's. F oh, no, they've not done it again. They've not. Oh, they managed to punish them this time. I was about to say, no one's cleared tall frozen doggy. And for a, like, I think, like, almost a fourth pistol round in a row, I thought we were going to see another shorty kill. It's all on the Crescent Coyotes map. Oh, hands. And it's three versus one. Mm. And, and now the double duelist is looking a lot better at just steamrolling the site. The utility coming through, clearing out the players, the ton of finding more, and Monkey really struggling with breaking this door. Finally slams through. Both players low within range to actually make that dangerous, but it will not happen. The heart rate monitor can dip down just a little bit. And I mean, yeah, just looking at this again, uh, I really don't know what to say. I think that's probably this matchup summarized best. Making making the easy part look difficult and the difficult yeah. part look easy. That's hi, perfect, mate. That, that is, is literally <laughs> it, right? Mate, literally, like, you know what? Like, you get that first bit, you dip out the side, you play for the retake, you have the advantage. Like, it would take a, a heroic effort to win, fr win from there, especially on pistols, but... Uh, do you know what? Things aren't meant to play, be played the I way they Oh. Here there. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Seems like uh, <laughs> the feels of the Kiwis are here. Okay. Chat is just gonna go up with it. What? Uh, what? Uh, it's just uh, shotgun most for warfare in heaven, Cairo. A most for once. The judge comes in. The shorty comes out. Kills being found. Now Squiggly has it in hand to try and deal with this threat, but it's just running blindly into the crosshairs. Coyotes find their eighth. Yeah. Again, Chickley with a Sheriff uh, is not too far away from that second headshot, by the way. Um, then this happened with a judge. 
That's a lot to, to break down. Totoro having a really good map on this jet. It's too late for this, Cairo, isn't it? I think it is It is a little too late for the amount of tomfoolery going on. But um, Chris and Coyotes playing this one nicely, uh, to be honest, on their attacking side. This uh, third round looking pretty strong for them economy-wise. Lots of shots being sent out. Absolutely no guessing for BT Engineers as to where this Execute will be coming through. You would even think it's a fake with the amount of gunfire they're sending in. And they may even hit the cancel. Could do so or make their opponents think they think it's a cancel. As they now look to show presence on top of mid. Is that Omen looking to rotate off? No, just in a more defensive position. Jiggly though has found Pivers and looks to continue on forward. It has been an onslaught, at least as a trade back, but it's a spam through the smoke that makes Crescent Coyotes be down to. And then the fragment comes in. You've got to look at the time, and I feel as if these t these teams don't know where the reverse uh, gear is. Has a so look to hit yeah. back in. Wants to constantly wanting to just step it up a gear, like you said. And looking at the setup here from BT, anyway, you have so much passive control afforded with the Killjoy setup as the suppression comes through. It's actually bought a cheeky left. window for Crescent to go for this rotate, re-hit B. The problem is the information goes cold, the players restabilize on the BT Engineer side, and with barely any time left on the clock, the footsteps will be heard, the guns will be trained, and I think the round will be lost for the attackers. Well, the turret was ready to take contact there, but it does so anyway. And the players just walk into a hail of bullets, seven, eight to seven, the score line. We expected them to, uh, I guess, have a good chance at converting that rifle round Taza, but I mean, the way in the way in which they did so will put their economy in a good state. Yeah, it's it's the decision again making on on the macro. You know that there's a killjoy set yes. up somewhere. You've gone towards A two rounds in a row and not seen it, and then deciding to sort of re-hit late into that B with all of the nanos, the turret, the uh, yeah. alarm bot up, it's never going to be ideal for you. Perhaps the element of surprise, something that they wanted to, uh, to catch into, but with how long the rotate was, anything but surprising. I think that the harsh thing is as well here is the only thing you've really got to dissuade anyone from an angle would be mm. the paranoia. I mean, Jiggly, even in this situation, they took a few fights before where it looked like they were, you know, relatively unsupported. But this time, you have the flash through the window, the shock dart to even chase them down. Really nicely played by the initiators on BT side. Uh, and well, as the players all start to swing out, they swing out into crossfires galore. Okay, GXQ has somehow managed to uh, dismantle those crossfires. It's down to one versus two. And Spike will go down. Mm. The market door being closed gives them a bit more of a chance. Paranoia should be catching the movement around the side of the green box. Should Isolate the fights one by one, but it won't be enough. Falls just short in the gun round. And Crescent Coyotes now are going to be staring at an even scoreline. These two teams inseparable in many ways. It took three bouts of overtime on Split for us to finally confirm one of them would be leading with a map advantage. And right now, I really could not call where we see this one going. It comes down to the details. It's not only that, it's just... Again, has it like you, you, how many times have we seen an owl drone clear out a main spot, to like taking their time from the coyotes? So many times on the BT engineer side, and again, it's those yeah, small no details that, that cost you. Yeah, I'd like to see Crescent Coyotes just get a lot more aggressive with this comp. Yeah, like, it was working so well for them when they were fast hitting A over and over. You have the blades in hand here to try and work with on Totono. And they are actually testing mid for the first time. Only issue with this is there's an operator in play. And Jiggly has already found the opener. That smoke a little bit awkward to deal with for GXQ. And a player who has been fragging out left, right and centre. But will be closed down. Now it's all up to a jet in mid. Okay, that was a bit awkward. I actually, for some reason, didn't register that gunfight in my head. And neither can Titono. Is that <laughs> just a spitball in market? Oh, 
the DPI bind or, or something perhaps enough to uh, to evade there. Jiggly getting value out of the operator, looking very comfortable now, just floating around, knife out, classic kills, little burst, uh, a flourish on the jet. And uh, Crescent Coyotes just need to read into what the setup is from BT Engineers and find those gaps because that is not what they've been able to do so far. Especially looking at like the A setup, for example, when the turret is there. Like, you know what I mean? Just dealing yeah. with these issues, finding a way to, to get through. The fact that the KO is going to be here to just stall even longer will not help. And the operator as well. But now they know about it. Now they can push through. Get that spike down and get those kills in. You've got to look at the engagements here. It's really fell in towards the Coyotes' hand. And they're really taking control of this. So much time to set up on the pose plan. The last two remaining players in towards CT. And, uh, I mean, it's going to be a sledgehammer to a uh, steel cage almost. Yeah, Pivers just needs to play spoiler to everything going on here. Doesn't really have a, a nice position to sort of uh, be escaping this one anytime soon. And in fact, they'll double up uh, two shrouded steps to put uh, an elevated position there in support. But uh, with Jiggly on the op, you want to chase this down and they're gonna do it. They deny having it in the next round or at least force BT engineers to dig into those pockets. And we are level yet again. These two teams cannot be separated. The good thing for Crescent Coyotes is the fact that has a, they will be able to uh, counter the KG ultimate when it comes out from Monkey. But whether that, that's a big if. Also got to think Pivers might have their own to come online as well. Uh, it looks as if they are going to continue with this pack mentality for the Coyotes. Mm. Whether they can get on towards Bees with the same success, a big question to be asked. It certainly fits the namesake. Pivers instead wants to play as the entry. Walk straight through and they'll get taken out almost instantaneously. Jiggly finding that one from the shadows instead used on the BT Engineers side to just help with that rotate assist from that position. Totono has the operator in fact, tries to make good of it but cannot. Nuts will show them out, show them the door and this is just a complete systematic disassembly of the Coyote team. At one versus five, uh, it's just going to be hard. I guess I believe in GXQ, I really do. It's like just with shots like that, but when there's so many players that can swing on you at yeah. one time, there's just no chance. Yeah, uh, and yet again, like I said, it's just not enough being done by Crescent Coyotes to actually deal with the BT Engineer setup. You know that they're playing with an operator. That's going to be somewhere on the map. You know the Killjoy setup is going to be somewhere. Try and interact with them. The problem with only having uh, one initiator here, not having the KO, is that you're lacking the amount of information you're able to gather. There's a, a solo player on a reconnaissance mission. You've already seen a few times them contacting with the turret, and that's just a symptom, I think, of the lack of utility they have available to them that they can afford uh, to work with. But it needs to be engaged regardless, and we are now seeing that. Slowly using the L drone to clear the closed corners so that you aren't moving into anything too bad. It's even forced the KG all the way to heaven. Look how clear this space and as here has it. And it's going to be shown through with the showstopper coming in. Nice entries. There's one player at the back of site being found out and that KG gets cleaned out. That site completely clear. Post plant well and truly set up, especially with Deroy. Destroy Lonely all the way up on towards window. It's just crazy, man. These rounds are like night and day. It's a flawless team ace from Crescent Coyotes after they just lost a flawless round against BT Engineers or a very close to flawless one uh, with JXQ, of course, finding that singular kill at the end. But this is what we want a bit more of. Okay, work out what the setup is. You know, have that initial clearing off the back of the Sova and then just throw the kitchen sink at it. You've got two du du you've got two duelists, Totono, Jack Black, double satchel, showstopper, the absolute works. Just just press W, man. Like that is the win condition for them here. Well, 
They're going to be pressing W straight in towards the KG setup if they go for you it here. Nice paranoia to clear things out, but I mean, the bigger one is the fact that we are going to see the lockdown. No response from the BET engineers, but it does come through late, which I really, really like. The response in terms of the Hunter's Fury to deny that ultimate comes through the last second, and that gives the chance to go for the Crescent Coyotes. Red button being pressed, and that red button is in the form of Titono going deep here. There's at least another uh, another drillers to use to help to even take chances but those chances go left right and centre and the players are somehow disconnected oh, fights being taken and won by BT engineers they're able to win this time and yet again take the lead for themselves force Crescent Coyotes to respond ultimates invested there heavy round winning ultimates from Crescent Coyotes you, you used your lockdown Hunter's Fury as well and as we slowly creep towards the end of this one it's just got overtime written all over it again Cairo it does so the way the rounds and the trends that we've been seeing for the past four has been attacker defender attacker defender now we'd expect the attackers to win this one um, if that trend is to continue, but the buy again a bit awkward. Well, I was going to say a bit awkward. It's not. It's not at all. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, both teams going to be even footings to 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 go at each other once again. Mm -hmm. And I mean, here if Crescent Coyotes can break that trend, at least find this round, but then move onwards from that. I mean, the BT Engineers' economy is going to be so weak. I mean, you're seeing Jiggly get aggressive as they do so often, immediately trying to activate this flank. BT Engineers well prepared for the A and they even have a Hunter's Fury to make it more difficult. Gonna catch so many tags, but not find the kills. Crescent Coyotes will do it instead. Yeah, but there's been a pepper in left, right and centre. <gasps> Look oh, at the no. spike. This is awkward. Needs to cross and it's already being held. Jack Black can find kills on the front line, but you have to worry so much about Jiggly's position. They're only able to get one and now it's a 2v1. Bit squiggly though. Oh, I like this. Already just going to dip, going straight towards B. The KG is going to be on a sprint Footsteps race high. with the over, And this is going to be a big, big... Oh. oh, this is nice. Yeah. Yeah, nice little readjustment here from Crescent Coyotes. They have that aggressive position. This should be the kill, and it is. Pivots here's the footsteps of the rotate towards CT. That's their call to Jack to say, okay, come back to A, get the spike planted, and even then, able to just find the kill. And this one is so important uh -huh. for Crescent Coyotes, like I said before, to just keep trading the rounds. Yeah. It has broken the economy of BT Engineers as well, coming into this chance now for them to set up on a map point. Their own pick as well, but, you know, not really too consequential when you look at the trend of rounds. Mm. Right. And, uh, yeah, just settle things up. Let's not count them out, though. A hero rifle on Jiggly can play that upset. That's all you need. And that is sometimes. I mean, it's interesting What's that they wouldn't rather throw that rifle elsewhere and just use knives. But the player's already coming through. Nice call out there. Good comms to identify the player in towards the corner. But they've not identified Jiggly. 70 HP and trying to dance around the generator. But the engineer, or the, sorry, the energy from that generator was all on the Crescent Coyote's hand. And it's another quick round. 12 to 11. We are confirmed overtime for the pack. Yeah. I mean, they are on pack watch as well, you know, they're, they're looking to smoke BT engineers in this 2-0, but like, it, it's just really aggressive set plays coming through, which is like how they're ending up winning and, and what has been the difference maker for them on this attacking side, right? Especially A, I don't think BT engineers have found a way where they feel really comfortable with dealing uh, of the A threat of Crescent Coyotes because you saw them before, they tried to play the Killjoy there. The utility was being bypassed really easily by both duelists. You had a situation before where, you know, they're trying to play towards retake, but they don't even oh have any damn players God. left. The Toto's taking them all off the board. Ah, uh, sliced and diced, there's nothing left, but there is a chase, oh, there's a foot race, and it's gone now. It's all up to Mon Monkey, and do you know what, I respect the hell out of them. So much mechanical ability, but to come up against four, to come up against ultimates, is going to be a tough ask. Already tagged up, they move in towards the ultimate, and the Crescent Coyotes, they take it in two. Oh, and I mean... We had a 